Hello, I'm Louise from the Cotswold Sewing School and I am back here today with Just Fabrics to show you how to make a cushion cover with a pom-pom trim and concealed zip. The fabric that we've used today is Tropical Andes Petrol. The first thing we need to consider are the measurements of our cushion pad. We really want a lovely full plump cushion at the end. So with my cushion pad, I just plump it up slightly to take my measurements and I'm going to measure seam to seam. So for the width and also for the drop of our cushion. So today, our cushion pad is 50 centimetres wide. And if you haven't got a seam, then obviously you just take it from the middle point by 40 centimetres drop. Every single fabric will have a level of stretch in it. So what I do to ensure that I have that lovely full fit at the end is I now deduct a centimetre from my drop and a centimetre from my width on my measurements, which would mean that today I'm working at a 39 centimetres drop, 49 centimetres wide. That gives us our finished cushion panel sizes. But what we need to now work out is our cut size, our cut fabric size. This includes adding our seam allowances. Today, we are going to want to add on a centimetre and a half seam allowance on all of our three edges, so our two side edges and our top edge. Our bottom edge today, we're actually going to have a two centimetre seam allowance. And this is because we're going to allow a little bit of extra fabric so that we can create a concealed zip. So now we just need to uh, recalculate to work out our cut panel size. Our width that we're working with is 49 centimetres. Adding on our seam allowance of one and a half centimetres to either side, means that we are cutting to 52 centimetres. Now we've got 39 centimetres drop, which is uh, the 40 minus the one centimetre for our fullness. And then this time for our seam allowances, we need to add on a centimetre and a half onto our top edge. And we need to add two centimetres onto our bottom edge. So we are going to cut our drop to 42 and a half centimetres. Today, our front panel and our back panel are going to be exactly the same size, so you now need to cut two of these panels to the same size. Now you have your two cushion panels cut to size, you may wish to either overlock the edges if you have an overlocker, or just zigzag stitch around them, uh, just to prevent any fray while you're working with them. Our panels are zigzagged, so we know we don't have to worry too much about fray now. We can think about uh, sewing our bottom edge to create our, our area where we'll be able to insert our zip. To do that, uh, we need to pop one panel on top of the other. So let's pop our fabrics right side to right side and raw edge to raw edge. And we're now going to pin our bottom edge uh, quite close to the raw edge and have the pins going across, so width ways. We are going to use our measuring grid or our ruler to create two marks now either side. Remember, we added on a two centimetre seam allowance for our bottom edge, which means that we are going to be actually machine stitching at the two centimetre mark. And all you need to do at this point, two centimetres up, is mark five centimetres from your outside edge on both sides. Now at the sewing machine, I have positioned the raw edge of our uh, bottom cushion panels against a two centimetre seam allowance. I've actually just popped a little bit of decorator's tape along that line also just to give myself a little bit of a larger guide to make sure that I'm keeping to a straight edge. So what we are going to do first of all is 
Keeping the whole way uh, along the bottom edge at our two centimetre seam allowance, we are first of all going to sew at a stitch length of two, so quite a small stitch length and we're going to sew at number two all the way along to our first mark that we made, which was five centimetres along from our outside edge. When we get to this point, we're going to reverse stitch a couple of times. This is to secure off that point because that will be a point of stress when the cushion is being opened and closed. We, at this point, are then going to switch on our machine to our longest stitch length which in this case is number four. And at four, we will sew the whole way along to our next mark, which was five centimetres in from the opposite end. That's the point where we'll do exactly the same as we've done here by repeating um, the forward back reverse stitch a couple of times at stitch length two and then we'll stay at stitch length two to sew to the end. Back at your table, you can pop the pins out now and open up your cushion panels, but still with the wrong side facing up. And what we want to do is actually open up this seam allowance at the bottom that we've created. You can do this using either an iron or a steamer. Uh, today we are going to use a steamer and you'll notice with the fabric that we're using today there is quite a lot of bounce back so it is going to need a good press. With this seam allowance now pressed open and looking very neat, we need to take out our long stitches. So the stitches in the middle of the two points where we had our much smaller stitches. Be really careful when you're using your unpicker not to disturb the, the reverse stitches on either point which we popped to secure um, the points of stress for the zip. So we need to leave those completely in situ. So the easiest way to do this is find the one side and then just pop your unpicker in just this side of that mark. And I'm just gonna pop a pin in at the other end just so I know where I need to stop. And if you carefully insert your your unpicker or your seam ripper, just glide it along. And if you get too much resistance, stop, because it means you may be getting the fabric by accident. All we want to do is get the thread and you should be able to just glide it along. And then I'm stopping when I get to my pin. And what we've created is a lovely neat pocket that our zip itself is going to sit into. We are ready to position our zip itself. Today we are using an invisible zip. Uh, the difference mainly is that it's much more slimline compared to normal zips. And when we're positioning, we want to be positioning the zip face down and obviously centralized with our, our gap that we've created, the little pocket. So we're going to Position our zip in place. Make sure the stoppers of our zip are just over the edge of where we have secured our stitching. And then we don't have to worry about the zip ends ever coming out. And we are only going to um, pin one side at a time. We'll pin and sew one side at a time because we are going to be using a special foot on our sewing machine to ensure that both stitches are towards the zip, not from the zip. Usually you have to sew one towards the zip and one coming away from the zip, which can be a bit fiddly. So this is going to show you how to make it much easier. Um, I'm going to position the zip in place with pins. Don't need a huge amount of pins because you have to move them as you sew and just on the one side. Uh, and what you want is to see just a little bit of the fabric this side of the teeth. 
You don't want the teeth to be pushing over the edge of the fabric because then your zip will no longer be concealed. When you're choosing your zip, have a little think about the colour that you would like. Now, why when it's going to be concealed? Just because you will see we've got a little option um, where you can either tuck the slider in at the end or where you can leave it exposed. And sometimes you can either colour coordinate, which looks amazing, or you can add a contrast colour, which adds a little pop of colour and that can look really effective. The method we are doing today also involves top stitching. So all of our stitching of our zip itself is going to be visible on the front of our cushion panels. So this is a really good idea to decide whether you want to colour match your threads if you're a little bit worried about getting a perfect straight line or whether you want to go for a contrast colour that's really going to pop again and can be a little bit of a design feature. Make sure you've got the same amount of fabric along the side of the zip teeth so that you've got this lovely straight stitch line when you do sew through. And once you've got a few pins in, we are ready to head to the machine to sew the first side. To insert our zip today, we are using an adjustable zipper foot. This is the perfect choice because we want to stitch really close to the teeth, but we don't want to have to worry about sewing accidentally into the teeth themselves. There is a groove on either side of the foot and the foot is on a slider, which gives us the ability to be able to sew towards the zip on both sides, which you can't usually do. The needle will position perfectly into the groove and by doing that, we get our straight stitch close to the teeth, but the edge of the foot itself will protect the needle from sewing into the teeth. As you can see, we're now positioned, ready to stitch towards the zip itself. I have started just past my stopper on the zip, uh, just to secure the ends of the zip and make sure that we don't risk them ever being pulled out, which can be a bit unsightly. And I am simply going to start by reverse stitching to secure my, my stitch. And then I'm going to hold the zip itself really taut to ensure that the zip doesn't creep and I keep the same amount of fabric visible this side of the teeth all the way down. And then when we get close to the zip itself, just make sure that the zip isn't in the way so you're not going to sew over and that the zip is sat perfectly in the middle of your seam allowance to keep it straight. Just come past the zip itself to the end where the other stopper is, just past the stopper and then secure. So that we can sew the second side of the zip, again towards our zip itself, I'm simply going to loosen the screw on the back of the slider on the foot, and I'm going to slide the foot over to position it so that the needle is now positioned in the middle of the groove on the second side of the foot. And when you're happy with the position, just tighten up the screw at the back. Now you can pin the second side and repeat exactly how you have done with the first. This is the bit that I absolutely love. We are ready to position our pom-poms. There is a little bit of a, a stretch on the pom-pom braid. So when positioning it, you are going to want to ensure that it's straight but not overstretched because of course when you sew that, that could pucker your fabric. We are only attaching the pom-poms to the, the sides of our front panel. And the only other thing to mention is you really do want to make sure you have an even amount of pom-poms on either side so you've got the symmetry. And also, when you're positioning your pom-poms, 
Just ensure you don't have one sat on your seam allowance. Once measured and you're happy with the position of the pom-poms, you can now pin them so the edge of the braid is against the raw edge of your fabric on the right side of your fabric. So we've now got right side facing up. Once you've done this side, you repeat exactly the same, making sure you've got the same amount of pom-poms on the other side. Before machine stitching your pom-poms onto your main fabric, pop the seam forward so that you're not sewing over that as it will make it easier to sew later on. Because primarily this is a tack stitch, we are simply just securing the pom-poms in place so that they don't move when we sew all of the panels together. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you stitch. Uh, there's lines going down the braid itself, so you could just pick a line to follow. And you don't have to have a particularly small stitch. It could be three, four, it doesn't really matter. At this point, we just don't want the trim itself to move when we are sewing our cushion cover together. And just keep an eye on ensuring that the trim itself stays straight and the edge of the braid is against your raw edge of your cushion panel. Once you've done this side, you repeat exactly the same. Our pom-poms are attached and we are ready to so our panels together to create our finished cushion cover. Before we do this, it's really important to remember to open our zip halfway so that when we can, when we have sewn it together, we can turn it the right side out. Now that the zip's open, we are going to line up our cushion panels and it's going to be raw edge to raw edge and when you're happy with the position you're going to pin them together just be aware that with the bottom edge you want to keep these seams flat so it's like you're dealing with two flat panels of fabric again Once we've pinned our panels together at the sewing machine, I'm going to keep the adjustable zipper foot on to sew together our sides of our cushions. The reason being, that foot will get my needle very close to my pom-poms themselves. So I'll get a lovely straight close stitch, but I don't have to worry about going into the pom-pom itself. When it comes to sewing the top edge, I will switch back to our standard foot, which is a zigzag foot, just to do our straight edge. Now our cushion cover is almost complete. We are going to zigzag stitch our panels together. Obviously, if you've got an overlocker, then you can just use your overlocker for this. And once we've zigzag stitched uh, right around the three edges, we are then going to cut off any excess seam allowance just to remove the bulk. We now get to turn it the right way out and pop our cushion pad in. And now you have a cushion cover with a pom-pom trim. I really hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, please like and subscribe below. Uh, if you fell in love with this fabric or you'd like to have a look for any other fabrics for your projects, then please head over to Just Fabrics. And if you're interested in any soft furnishing courses, then please head over to the Cotswold Sewing School.